Um, so we're out today and we're going to have a look at the vacuum system that controls the differentials in this vehicle. Um, I've never come across this type of system prior. Um, so we're going to have a look and see how it operates. Um, I'm going to kind of do a bit of a talk through the um, differential setup. Um, it's a bit different from anything I've ever driven. It's really quite an interesting system, but I will say massively complicated and it does pickle your brain when you're trying to go through the whole testing process. Uh, I did think there was some faults with it um, when I first got the truck. Um, one of them was definitely the vacuum pipe that I fixed in the oil change or fuel filter video. Um, when we fixed that, then that provided a, a stronger vacuum um, coming from the engine. Um, it's made the brakes hot, um, a lot sharper um, because that vacuum also is the, the vacuum assist for the brake uh, servo. Um, but it, along that pipe from the vacuum pump to the brake servo, there's a little um, offshoot pipe and that powers the vacuum system, which is under the floor there. And there'll be a little video of a little tour of that at the end of this, um, at the end of this video. So basically I just wanted to run through how the system works. Okay, so everything's off at the minute. And that means that the center differential automatically is locked. <clears throat> um, and that means that there's um, three pistons essentially vacuum pistons, uh, one in the center diff, one in the front and one in the rear diff. Uh, and when there's no power supply to the center one, sorry, no vacuum supply to the center one, um, that means that it is pushing in and, and that blocks the front axle and rear axle together uh, and, and would turn at the same time. And that makes the handbrake more efficient. Um, and, and my understanding that that's the reason for that. When you turn the ignition on, um, there is a little click from the relay behind the all-wheel drive system, um, and that is the electrical signal um, to open that relay. Uh, there's electrical solenoids behind the dash that control where the vacuum is sent. You turn the ignition on, and that one um, supplies the vacuum to the center diff, and that then unlocks that, and provides separation between the front and rear axle uh, and then makes it rear wheel drive until you turn the system on. Um, that electrical connection um, is trying to do that but will only needs the combination of the engine running and that to, to separate those two. Um, so what we're going to quickly do is we're going to start her up and we'll go through the process of what's involved here. Uh, so you can tell it's already a lot quieter in here with all our uh, transmission tunnel all sorted out for the MLT. Um, we're in a, in a good position with things. Um, so there are two ways to turn the center diff and lock it. Um, and First of all, we can lock it in high ratio by just flicking this switch. And second of all, we can go lock it in low ratio, which is by moving the gear stick, the, the high-low gear stick into low ratio. And that locks that center differential up. Um, so if I pull that into low there, um, and we've got a good thing that these three lights, um, although they're dim at the minute, and you can't see that on the camera, I would imagine. They, they light up brighter when the differentials lock into place. So if I go into first there, and we just pull forward just a little bit, right, then our light comes on and that shows that our center diff is engaged, that full light there. Um, and that is um, in low ratio center locked, okay? I can push that forward can crawl forward a bit more and that unlocks the center diff 
and we're now in high ratio unlocked. If I flick that switch, um, we're coming straight on because uh, we, we've, we're all lined up at the minute. That is high ratio with the center locked. So that, that's uh, really handy to know. Uh, and that means that our front, our front wheels and rear wheels are getting the same power supplied to them as we're going along. Um, I hope later on to get a video of some, um, try and find a muddy field or something where we can test all this in and we can get a proper demonstration of how all this is working. Um, we've also can lock the front and the front and rear axles. The rear axle will only lock if the centre axle's engaged and the front axle will only engage if the rear axle is locked. Okay, so with this, with the center axle being locked, I can flick that switch, the light's not come on yet, so it's not engaged. If we crawl forward just a little bit, center axle locked that means that both wheels in the rear axle will turn at the same rate um, and the same amount of power is going to the front axle and rear axle if I flick the front axle one as well that's not on yet so we go there we go with just that little sh shuttle of going into gear there we go uh, so we've now got the two axles locked and the center that means all four wheels will turn at the same speed okay and that's in high ratio you only want to be doing that when you're in the mud okay um if you and on the roads you'll rip a dip out in no time at all uh, doing all that um, and then you should just be able to flick them all closed and we can go into low ratio we don't need to turn the, the all-wheel drive on right we can turn on our two center, our two front and rear diffs, and that's now us in a crawling speed um, with all all uh, four wheels turning at the same rate. Um, a good way to see this is if we lock, if we go to lock, we'll start getting skipping. We've got wheels skipping there already just in that lock and that's testing that that the, the wheels are trying to turn at different speeds so I'll just turn this off when I turn it off I get a little whistle from down in the uh, the vacuum um, reservoirs down the bottom that they're just um, equalizing the pressure up um, so one thing I have found is that um, I think this vehicle had been sat quite a while um, and the electrical connections on the uh, front and rear um, differentials were, were kind of stuck up, uh, the micro switches that control things. And that meant that this switch essentially wasn't getting acknowledgement from the rear diff that that was locked up. Um, and that meant that then I couldn't turn that diff on because uh, the there wasn't an input signal to that switch to say that that switch could turn on from that point. And that won't light up unless the rear one already has. So I hope this has given some kind of insight into how the, the system works. Like I say, we're going to try and find uh, a muddy field down the line and we're going to try and... Um, go and, and do some mud plugging at some point um, uh, nothing too dangerous because I don't want to scratch her up now I'm starting to get it looking pretty um, and we'll look um, at the end of this video there'll be a little bit about how the, the vacuum reservoirs and stuff are down under the passenger footwell plate
So undo them four bolts and then we can get this panel out. So under this panel we've got our um, air system coming in uh, and we can test it. I think I'm going to give the whole this a bit of a clean out. There's some muck and mud that doesn't necessarily mean, need to be in here. Um, we're going to test that these um, hold air um, and that the non-return valves are working. Um, they, they should be pressurizing and checking just generally everything's going as it should. <laughs> 